Hello. Today we are going to see how to create custom connectors for your Azure Logic apps. So, in order to create a custom connector, the first thing we are going to do is create some an API, right? Uh, so, in this case, what I'm going to do is just create a custom API that gets data from Twitter. So, I already have the controller implemented. It's a controller, uh, it's a web API implemented in .NET Core 2.2. So, we see we have this Twitter controller, and there it's more control base, and it's marked as API controller. I already have my configuration set. And you will see that I will get consumer key, consumer secret, access token, access token secret, and the screen name, because I will run this as an application. Um, so now I already have this bound. So if you see my startup, I already have the Twitter connector configuration configured and, and set as a singleton. So, when the controller constructor is invoked, this class will be already filled with the data in the app settings.json file. If you want to see how to do that, you can see my video on how to bind custom configurations in .NET Core. Okay, and what I'll do now is just I'll create an endpoint and I won't create uh, more custom objects. I will just take advantage of the objects that um, the link to Twitter um, already gives me just for testing, pu testing purposes and to make this a little bit faster. Uh, so if you see, I have this endpoint, it's named get user status, status is a sync. It received a string. This is the user handle we are going to find um, the tweets for. It returns a list of status. The status class has a lot of names. It has the information for the user, coordinates, the place, uh, if it's a retweet, etc., 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 along with the text. Okay. And then I already have this implemented we are not going to see how to use link to twitter we can see that in other video so basically this is my endpoint it just created an instance of twitter connector it sends the configuration it requests for the user statuses for a specific user handle gets the result and returns the results so we are going to test this. So let's wait this uh, to finish. We see that I have my endpoints here. This is the endpoint. So I'll try. Uh, one. to get information for my user. Okay, so let's see what happens. It is going to get information for that user. And you see that I have your text, how to create cities for your game dev in 3D. And it was tweeted by my user. Uh, say from Microsoft okay it says Microsoft okay screen name Microsoft uh, it's a retweet from Satya Nadella introducing Minecraft Earth applying the power of technology from Azure to PlayFab to bridge the physical and B and there is much more text. Okay, 
So, what do we do? We basically just publish this as a um, we publish that and we go to where we publish it. I already have it published to this um, URL demo apis.ptiecostarica.com and I have Swagger implemented. So I have here the swagger.json file that we are going to need later in a second. So now what I am going to do is I'll go to the Azure portal and I'll create a logic app custom connector. So let's wait a little bit for that to load. It's a little bit slow. Okay. Logic apps custom connector. I name it demo APIs custom connector. I'll use an already existing resource group and I'll create a logic app custom connector there. So we'll wait a couple of seconds for the custom connector to be created and then we have to go and edit it so we have already the custom connector but the custom connector still doesn't know um, its implementation details it doesn't know the endpoints that it has available because we haven't given it that information so after we go to the to edit the custom connector um, we click here, edit. And now you see that we have three items, general, security, and definition. So we are going to uh, edit those a little bit. So we see that here we can, um, we can import Swagger definition. So I will go save this one demo a APIs solder okay demo APIs solder okay there it is, I'll update it. So now we go back to here. We we'll tell it to import the demo APIs swagger.json file. If you saw our host, it's that and the base URL will keep that one. We go to security and we see that this API uses basis of authentication, so we set up that. Um, it's not configured for that endpoint though, but the rest of the API that already exists it has uh, custom authentication implemented. So I'll go to definition. And you'll see that it actually recognized some of the um, endpoints that we have there. And we have here this one get user statuses async. We see that um, it will have this URL and it will request or expect a user handle in the query parameter. It returns a success. So, yeah. 
there are a couple of warnings that we do not really care at the moment. So we'll update that connector. We'll wait for this to be saved. And after everything is saved, we are ready to use this custom connector in our Logic apps. So let's wait a second because it's um, it is it has it's a little bit slow at the moment. Okay, so we'll go back to or our resource group. So we can recreate so we create everything in the same group to be a little bit. Uh, To have everything in order for in place. So now I am going to create a logic app. We'll hit create. It will request me for my logic app. I want it to be created in that same resource group. We leave the same location where the resource group is created. And we wait for the logic app to be created. We go to resource. And we will create a black logic app. Our trigger will be just a request. We are going to invoke it on demand. So when an HTTP request is received. And then what we are going to do is um, to uh, get the timeline for the specified user. So we are going to have a body like this. So in our request, we are going to have that. If there is a name, as you call, or whatever you want, this is just for generating the page load. So it generated pay the payload that the request is going to expect uh, property name twitter username of type a string we are going to save that for now and we already have this url i'll copy this url and i'll paste paste it here in a second and we are going to test if that logic app works, it seems it worked. So it succeeded. Let's test it again. Set accepted. Let's refresh. Okay, so it's working. Now we are going to add the custom connector part of the logic app. So now after the HTTP request has been received, we are going to select custom and you'll see that here I have the demo API customer connector, which is the one I created some seconds ago. Get user statuses async, it will request me for my credentials, so my demo 
custom connection demo user and demo So, we are going to set the user handle as a parameter and the user handle will be the Twitter username that comes from the HTTP request. And then we are going to create a new step which will be the response and then the response what we are going to do is in the body we are going to set the results for that action for the our custom connection connector action so We'll invoke this and we'll see how it goes. If everything goes okay, we should see the, um, the JSON. So it seems that something may not have worked as expected. Or actually, yeah, let's see. Okay, so yeah. I uh, remove the add from there and we see that I get all of the, well, a couple of results that have been posted by Azure. Uh, I'll use now my get my Twitter user. So the, the tweet has been tweeted by me. Okay. Microsoft etc. So that's a quick demo on how to create custom connectors for your logic apps applications. I hope you have liked it and uh, feel free to subscribe. Also I do development in .NET, .NET Core, Power BI and Microsoft Azure, so you can contact me through my link profile of my Upwork profile too for any of that work. Thank you very much and have a good day.